What is up, Relevant Kingdom Center? I am so excited about God, what he's doing in our lives, what he's doing in our church. Can y'all celebrate Jesus? Come on, this morning. Can you celebrate what he's doing in our church and in your life? Come on, somebody give God a praise. Listen, we're getting ready to go into a sacred moment. This entire service has been a sacred moment where we decided that we're going to focus our attention on Jesus, the one who matters most. And so what I'm going to ask for us to do is in this moment, especially while we're getting ready to plant the seed of the word, now that we've had an amazing worship and praise experience, we're getting ready to plant the seed of the word. So I want you guys to pay attention. I don't want too much walking up and down in the sanctuary today. Of course, we know that people can be easily distracted by the slightest things. And so what we need you to do is to help us, to help them, amen, by limiting the amount of distraction as possible. Well, today we are kicking off a brand new series called Expectations. What happens when our expectations aren't met? And of course, we're counting down to Christmas where we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let me just go on record by stating that, of course, we know that according to the context of scripture and the way things were described in the text, we know that the winter months or the Christmas season that we study as or that we decided to use as Christmas may not be necessarily the moment that Christ was born. However, you know, I think about it like this. My mother-in-law, she has actually two birthdays. She celebrates two birthdays. She's a blessed woman. The first birthday that she celebrates is a birthday that was actually correct. See, what had happened was when she was in Jamaica, on her birth certificate, they put the wrong date. And so as a result, on her birth certificate, it shows one date, but the actual birth date is another date. And so we celebrate both of them, but here's the kicker. She doesn't recognize the actual birth date. She's decided that she's going to recognize the one that is on the certificate. And so while we celebrate both of them, the real party is the one that was actually a mistake. <laughs> Amen. And so here's the thing. She doesn't care really when we celebrate it as long as we celebrate it. And that's what I want to tell us today as we get ready to go into this Christmas season. Let's recognize the fact that, one, we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whether it's the right date or not. Come on now, somebody. And so today, as we recognize the fact that our Savior was born, I'm excited because the Bible tells us that when the announcement was made, it was after a season of 400 years of silence from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We've got about 400 years of silence and then all of a sudden God speaks. Can I just tell somebody even before we get started today that I believe that God is getting ready to speak to you in a significant way. Most of you may have said to yourself, Pastor, it's been difficult to hear from God lately because of all of the distractions and all all of the things I've been dealing with. It seems as though God has not been speaking to me lately. Can I just tell you, I believe that as you posture your heart and position yourself to be in the presence of God like you're supposed to, that God is getting ready to speak to you. Come on now, somebody. He's going to lead you. He's going to direct you. And he's going to guide you, especially as we get ready to go into this new season. Well, with all of that being said, and now we don't have too much hang-ups about Christmas in December, amen. We want to go ahead and get into the word of God today. And um, as you get ready to stand, I want you to stand all over, amen, the sanctuary. I want you to stand all over the sanctuary today. And of course, we're gonna go to Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 through 19. Genesis chapter 28, Verse 10 to 19. And the Bible says that when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. Come on. He said, how awesome is this place? This is one. This is none other than the house of God. Today, if I could tag a topic to this text, it would be the un expected places or the unexpected place that we find God 
Well, you know, of course, as we talk about the Christmas narrative, one of the things that we would note about the Christmas narrative is that the Savior of the universe, Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, was born in a manger. But when we think about place, when we think about where God would want to do something significant, or when we think about geography, we believe that, watch this, God usually will meet us in specific places. Everybody say place. God would usually meet us in specific places. Of course, you could be in the wrong place at the wrong time and miss the opportunities that that place would present. But you could also, or that place would have produced, or you could also be in the right place at the wrong time and yet still miss the potential that place could bring. So timing and place matter. Everybody say place matters. Right, so your place has to be the right place. And the timing has to be the right time. Can I just ask you to do me a favor? Look at your neighbor if you haven't spoken to them yet for the day and say, neighbor, I just want you to know that you're in the right place at the right time for the right thing from the right God. And somebody holler back, I know that's right. Yeah, so place is significant. Place is important. And all throughout scripture, we see the importance of both time and place. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 through 19 says this, that when Jacob awoke from his sleep, again, here's the text, that he said, surely the Lord is, watch this, in this place. And I was not aware of it. Why wasn't he aware of it? Maybe because he didn't expect God to be in this particular place that he was at. So the Bible says that he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone and he had placed that he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. Watch this. And he called the place Bethel. Watch what it means. The house. Everybody say the house. The house of God. Thro through the city, though the city used to be called Luz. So now here it is. Jacob is in this place call Luz, and he has this vision, and he sees this manifestation of the presence of God, where there were angels ascending and descending, we call it Jacob's ladder, and the Bible says that after Jacob has this vision, he gets up in awe, and this fair that the Bible uses was, this fair was one of reverence, this, this fair was one of a posture that was saying that I am definitely in the presence of Almighty God. While this fair was a healthy fair, the Bible says that Jacob said something significant. He said, how awesome is this place? He recognized the importance of the place. Everybody say the place. Now, we know that place is important. Again, not only through Jacob, but we see in Exodus chapter 19, verse 20, that when God met with Moses on the mount called Sinai, watch this, God gave him a specific time that he should be to that place, and God gave him a specific geographical location of that place. Now, the Bible says that when God descended on Mount Sinai to give Moses the commandments and the instructions for the people of Israel in that moment, that God was able to tell Moses that now, Moses, I want you to come up the mountain. Everybody else has to stay on the foot of the mountain. They can't even touch the mountain because if they touch it, they will die. Let me just tell y'all something about the presence of God. I know a lot of us cry out for the glory of God. And I know a lot of us say, God, we just need you to manifest yourself in this place. But can I ask us, how many of us could truly handle the presence of God? How much of us could truly handle his glory when it comes in his fullness? You see, the reason why God told Moses to tell the people to be careful of the place and that they don't touch the, the place of the mountain is because he knew that in their humanity, humanity in their flawed flesh in their frail parts of clay that they could not handle the glory because their sin was not welcomed in God's presence and so when God called Moses up 
God called Moses up because he had already sanctified him and he already ordained him in that moment so that, watch this, Moses was able to come up to the mountain so that he could hear God's voice. But watch this, Moses never sees his face because Moses could not handle the face of God. Come on now, somebody. See, but God called Moses to a specific place. Everybody say place. And it was that specific place that God gives him instruction. Now, I want you to know that God is going to give you instructions in specific places. In Exodus chapter 25, verse 22, he says, watch this. He says, there, everybody say there. Again, he's telling him, here is the specific place that I will meet with you. And this is what we call the tent of meeting. And so God gave Moses specific directions of this specific place. Now, here's what God did. Because now God wanted to show the people of Israel that he was dwelling with them, he gave Moses an instruction in Exodus 25 of how he is to construct the tent or a meeting place as he built the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible says that Moses built an ark and the presence of God would rest in on the ark between the mercy seat, between the two cherubims. And so that the people of Israel would know that the presence of God would be with them as they journeyed through the desert. Come on, anybody just glad that God is a God who is present? That is why this season is a great season. Because watch this. The Bible says that he shall be called Emmanuel, God, watch this, with us. And God wanted to assure the children of Israel that he was with them through the desert. But watch this, he asked and he instructed Moses to build a specific place. Everybody say place. Come on, you didn't say it loud enough, say place. He instructed him to build a specific place. And he said, watch this, Mo Moses, in this place, it is here, it is there, that I'm going to meet with you. The Bible even tells us as we go and venture into the New Testament that place was important because after Jesus had died and after he had ascended, he told the apostles, his disciples at that moment, that watch this, that they are to stay in a particular place. He said that you are not to leave Jerusalem until, watch this, the Holy Spirit comes. Now, he tells them that once the Holy Spirit comes, then he's going to disperse them into the uttermost parts of the earth. But they had to wait in a specific place. Ask your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor, are you in the right place? They had to have been in a specific place. And watch this. The Bible says not only were they geographically to stay in Jerusalem, but I like how the book of Acts describes it. The book of Acts says this, that when the day of Pentecost had come, watch this, y'all, they were gathered in, watch this, one place. Everybody haul at your boy one more time and say place is important. Yeah, they were gathered in one place. Please note, however, here is where the unexpected comes with the expectation that God is going to meet you in a particular place. See, because here's what I want you to know, that God will usually show up in places that are unusual and places that are not unexpected. Let me say it again. God will show up, hear me good relevant, in places that are unusual and places that are unexpected. See, places are only significant, watch this, not because of their p particular geographic features, but places are significant according to their spiritual matter. Because here's the thing, it is God's presence in a place that makes that place significant. Y'all stick with pastor, I promise y'all we're going to shout in a minute, but the Bible says, watch this, that when God shows up in a particular place, then that place became significant. It was not because the place was significant on its own that God decided he's going to show up there. No, God showed up in unusual places and unexpected places. And when he showed up, those places became significant. And so while these places at times would have been 
embarrassing in their ordinary ordinariness. Watch this. The Bible tells us that God's presence is what makes the difference in a place. And here is my desire. God, let your presence be seen and felt and experienced here in this place. Come on now, somebody. Let the Holy Spirit of God show up in this place among us. How many of you are ready for the presence of God? Amen. But here's what God said to Moses before we go any further. He says, tell the people to wash themselves, prepare themselves, because tomorrow I'm about to do great and mighty things among them. I'm about to show myself to them. And so God, amen, said to Moses, prepare the people's hearts. And here's what I'm going to tell you. If we want to experience God in this place like never before, we've got to make sure that our hearts are prepared to receive him. Come on now, somebody. It doesn't matter how ordinary a place looks. The significance comes when God's presence shows up. The Bible would tells us about Psalm about Mount Zion in Psalm 48, verse 2. Watch what it says. It says that Mount Zion in Scripture seems to be a lofty place. As a matter of fact, Mount Zion, Mount Zion is not the highest mountain in the world. But yet, watch what Psalms 48, verse 2 says. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zaphon in Mount Zion, the city of the great king. But watch this. In fact, Mount Zion is not even the highest point in the land. Let me say it again. Mount Zion is not even the highest point in the land. And it doesn't particularly stand out as a high peak in its area. As a matter of fact, its loftiness that the psalmist describes is only lofty. And it's only significant and it's only grand because of its spiritual importance and not just its physical importance. Because God's presence, hear me good, God's presence is what makes a place significant, not the other way around relevant. So that's why God would show up, here we go, in a place called Galilee. I know y'all were saying, Pastor Dury, I thought this was supposed to be a Christmas message, but here, here we are, amen, in the context of why I could tell you that God, amen, he would show up in unusual places. Come on. And he will show up in unexpected places. Because watch this, the Bible says that God would show up in a place called Galilee. Not in the palatial palaces of Palestine or in the courts of Herod. Not in the prominence of Jerusalem or Herod or some other prominent city in Jerusalem. But watch this. The Bible says that when God was getting ready to break through 300, 400 years of silence, come on, that he showed up, that the angel of the Lord showed up, come on, in a place called Galilee to a teenage girl. Hallelujah. And watch this. The Bible says that once God showed up, he said to her, Favored are thou, Mary. Come on. Once the angel showed up, he said, Mary, you are favored. You're favored because while you may be in Galilee, which is considered a ghetto, God is showing up to you today. Come on. Somebody ought to thank God for his presence in unusual places and unexpected places. But once God decided to show up, he showed up in Galilee. And watch this. We can tell that Galilee was not considered significant in the context of its culture based on what we see happens in John chapter 1, verse 45. When Philip and found Nathaniel, because Nathaniel was on the seashore, and Philip went to find him. And watch what Philip said to Nathaniel. He said, we have found the one that Moses had wrote about in the law, the one the prophets foretold. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, the s Jesus of Nazareth. Watch this. He says Jesus of Nazareth. Of course, Nazareth was a town in Galilee. But he says Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And watch what Nathaniel's response was. He says, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Nathaniel asked, come and see. And Philip, when Jesus, when, when Philip saw, come and see, said Philip. And when Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, showed up, 
Watch this. Nathaniel looked at him. And Nathaniel said, surely this is the son of God. Because he could sense that this was no ordinary man. That this was no usual man. That this was the king of kings and the lord of lords made manifest in the flesh. Yes, from Galilee. Yes, from Nazareth. An unexpected place. But yet the presence of God and God himself showed up. Amen. And came. Amen. From this unexpected and unusual place place and when jesus was born come on now somebody not only was he born amen and this considered to be from galilee or from nazareth but the bible says this that when jesus was born out of all of the geographical locations that he could have chosen that the king of kings could have been born come on out of all of the geographical locations that the lord of lords was born again this was a specific place that god decided that he would be born in and the bible says that he was born in a manger a manger would not be considered a place for a king but a manger was a place where animals were held and we would say that why would the king of kings be born born in a manger it was because watch this God he wanted to show that watch this he is the God of unexpected places everybody say an unexpected place he wasn't born in the Ritz Carlton of Jerusalem but he was born in a manger an unexpected place now God still directs us to specific geographical locations and would tell us where Two or three of us are gathered, watch this, that he is in the midst. Paul reminds us, watch this, not to forsake the gathering of ourselves together because wherever we show up as the church, wherever we so show up as the people of God, God's presence enters into that place. So where two or three of us are gathered, God shows up. And watch this, he does wonders among us when his presence comes. And you have to discern, hear me, Relevant Kingdom Center, you have to discern the place that God has assigned for you. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor say, do you know your place? Yeah, that's why, amen, God will assign you to Relevant Kingdom Center, some of you. And maybe some of you, this is not your place. Hallelujah. But when you find the place that you know that God's speaking to you, when you find the place that you know that the presence of God is there, amen, and that you're bu being built up, that you're growing, amen, that is the place that you want to make sure that you're attached to, that you're connected to, because it's that place, watch this, that you will receive your assignment. It is that place like the mountain that God told Moses to come up to where he res received the instruction from the Lord. It's that place that you will receive God's instruction, amen, for your life. Somebody shout the place. And while all of that is good preaching and teaching, I want you to know that even though I tell you that there is a specific place that God would want to meet you, it does not suggest that God is contained or limited. Hear me good, Relevant Kingdom Center. God is not contained or limited, but watch this. He rather reminds us that while he is not contained, amen, or limited to a place, he is also not contained or limited to our preference. Is there anybody here glad, amen, that God is not limited to man's preference? Because if he was limited to man's preference, we would never experience his presence in our life. Because people don't usually prefer the lowliest. People don't usually prefer the least. People don't usually prefer people that they don't believe in themselves. But I don't know about you. One of the things I'm glad about is that God, his presence is not contained to our preferences. It is not limited to our finite expectations. As a matter of fact, the place that God now resides, hear me good, watch this, here's, here's where it gets real good. The place that God resides is now not in temples or in tents that were crafted by the hands of man. Hallelujah. But now the presence of God, while it was contained in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, to a tent and a meeting place, watch this because of the fact that, watch this, sin separated man from God. Hallelujah. Now we can see that after Jesus was born, amen, the Bible tells us now that he would now dwell within. Everybody say within. 
he would now dwell within you and I. Now here is an unexpected twist and an unexpected term because people think that God is just limited to a building, but baby, can I just tell you, he is not just in or present where there is buildings that were crafted by the hands of man, but he is present in the building that was crafted by his very own hand. He is present within you and I. Everybody say, God is not just with me, but he is in me. You got you to gotta say that like you mean it, because can I tell you, this is what Christmas reminds us about. Not only is he Emmanuel, God with us, but he is God in us. Hallelujah. He has come now to dwell not just among us, but he has come to dwell in us. That is unexpected. The Bible tells us in Matthew 27, verse 50 through 51, let me, let me preach it. Let me teach it before I preach it. The Bible tells us that when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, watch what happened. He gave up the spirit. And at that moment, once he was crucified, once the lamb that was born in a manger hung on a rugged cross, and once he had given up the ghost, the Bible tells us, or the spirit had left. Watch what, watch what happened. The Bible says that the temple, the curtain of the temple, what temple are we talking about? This was Solomon's temple. Now we've got different temple uh, timelines, and we know that there was the tent of meeting that Moses had established, but then we know that God had told David, I mean, to, that he would build it, that his son would build a temple, amen, and Solomon was the son that ended up building the temple. David couldn't build the temple because his hands was unclean, amen, but Solomon came and Solomon built the temple, and now that temple was where God's presence would be met, amen, and men would go in to meet with God, and so the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew that now here comes a new covenant. Here comes what God is getting ready to do in the earth, and that is the temple's curtains were torn in two from top to bottom. What is the curtain significance? It was the holies of holies. It was the area that separated man, amen, from God. And only the priest, after he would make a sacrifice, and only during a certain time of the year, he was permitted to go beyond those curtains into the holies of holies, where the ark of the covenant rests, where the presence of God would rest, amen. And watch this even tells us that they would have to have bells tied around them, because if after a while you didn't hear the priest after he went behind the veil, amen, you mean, that means that that priest, amen, would have probably been dead because he was in truly sanctified and they would pull him out. But I'm so glad, amen, that that temple's veil was torn because now the perfect sacrifice had been made, hallelujah, and now watch this, God would not be contained, amen, to a temple or a building that was crafted by the hand of man, but now he would come and he would dwell within temples that was crafted by the hands of God. So God doesn't just rest on you, but he dwells within you. He indwells us through the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 9 verse 11 tells us a new tabernacle was now established. And watch this. This tabernacle that was established was not paid for by the blood of bulls and goats, but by the blood of Jesus. And so we see in Acts chapter 17 verse 24 it states this, that the God who made the world and everything in it, watch this, being the Lord of heaven and earth. Here's what happens now. He does not live in temples made by the hand of man. It now says that he can be found, amen, by all men when they seek him, and they can be found by him when they seek him, because now God is not just the Emmanuel God with us. He is the God that lives within us. And so why is all that significant? And I keep telling you all every Sunday, I wish I was a better preacher, amen, but I need to give you some substance so that you could understand and appreciate where we've, we've now come. But why is all of what I just said to you in the beginning of this message significant? See, this is significant because when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the fact that we serve a God that shows up in unexpected places. It reminds us, watch this, of this specific and this powerful truth that God cannot be contained to the places of our expectation and that within me dwells God, the Holy Spirit, and that makes me, watch this, y'all, here we go, significant. 
Can we have church now? Can somebody in the sanctuary, can RKC Florida, can RKC online just shout with pastor and just tell, tell the devil, let the devil know it. Say, I am significant. Come on. Hallelujah. You didn't say that with enough confidence or with enough swag. Say it like you mean it. Say, I am significant. See, by myself, I am nothing. But because, amen, I am just a flawed clay vessel, I realize that without God, I truly am nothing. But because I got God on the inside, amen, he makes me special. He makes me significant. Paul recognized, watch this, himself to be the chiefest of sinners. Yet God, through him, watch what he said, displayed mercy and immense patience. See, when someone is precious, you show them patience. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's why you can't afford to be self-righteous. That's why you can't afford to act like your stuff don't stink. Hallelujah. Because if you just realize that God has made you, amen, significant just because he's present, amen, because you're nothing but a flawed part of clay. Come on, you were nothing but just, amen, a manger that housed stinky animals. Hallelujah. Until the presence of God showed up there. Hallelujah. Is there anybody up in here that could give God praise because you know that you're significant? Why? Because you have the presence and the power of God within you. No wonder Peter tells the church, but you are a chosen. Everybody say, I'm chosen. Yeah, no, shout it again. Say, I'm chosen. Now, just encourage your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're chosen. Yeah, you may not come from the right block. Amen. You may come from the ghetto. Amen. People may not believe in you. They may see who your daddy and your mommy, amen, may be, and they may say that because of your, amen, history, amen, you don't have a great destiny. But can I just tell you, God says you're chosen. Yeah. Hallelujah. People may not prefer you, but God says you are my preference. Hallelujah. That is why we could celebrate, amen, this season, because it reminds us that we are a chosen generation. Watch what it tells us. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people, watch this, for his own possession, that you may claim and proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, here's where it gets exciting for me, because he says, once you were without mercy, remember I told you that in the tent of meeting, that God would show up through the mercy, amen, his presence would show up in between those cherubims, amen, that were on the Ark of the Covenant, and it was con considered or called the mercy seat. Amen. See, now, because of the precious blood of Jesus, now we are sprinkled, amen, not only sprinkled, but we are covered and cleansed with the blood of a spotless and sinless lamb. And so now God is able to come and he is able to dwell within this present, within this body of clay, within this jar of clay. Watch this, because he has given me mercy. And that's why at Relevant Kingdom Center, we say that this church is a church where we show grace because all of us were in a place where we needed grace before. Is there anybody up in here grateful that you're significant and grateful that he's shown you grace? And because you're precious, he was patient with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only because of his presence, you're significant and precious, but I want you to realize because of his presence, you could be resilient. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 9 says, But we have this treasure, watch this again, in jars of clay, to show that the surpassing power of God belo belongs to God and not to us. Look at somebody say, don't get it twisted. I'm not this strong because I just built like this all by myself. I'm strong. Because of who was on the inside of me. I'm strong. Because watch this. Even though you didn't expect it, his presence dwells here, baby. Come on. I may not be the finest amen on the block. I may not have the best swag that may be in the town. But I do know something. That because of the presence of God, baby, I am resilience. It said, watch this. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. So watch this, you're resilient in the fact that even things that were divinely assigned 
or seem, amen, to come against your life, to take you out. Amen, you're getting ready. Watch this to come back up. You're getting ready for your bounce back season. Come on now, somebody. I'm telling you the reason why I'm excited about Christmas because it reminds me that the ex the, the 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 presence of God that may be unexpected in my life because of who I am and because of what I did. It's because of this presence, amen, that I can bounce back from every attack that the enemy has come tried to put against my life. And can I just tell you, everything that was assigned to kill you is going to be placed under your feet in this next season, and you're getting ready to bounce back. You're resilient because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, connected to Christmas, Pastor Dury. When the wise man came, amen, looking for a king, amen, Herod was so jealous that he said, tell me where this king is once you find him. And yet once they found him, an angel of the Lord showed up and told the wise men not to go back to Herod because Herod had diabolical plans. And so watch this. They evaded the king, amen, so that the king of kings and the Lord of lords, amen, could have fulfilled his assignment. And can I just tell you, amen, whatever was coming after you to take you out because of God's presence in your life, you're going to bounce back. Amen. And you're going to fulfill your assignment. I prophesy to Relevant Kingdom Center. I prophesy over your life right now that you are going to fulfill the assignment that God has placed on your life in this next season. His presence not just makes you significant, but it makes you resilient. And then the final thing I would tell you about why his presence is important in your life and why, even though it's unexpected, we need it. Amen. And we should be glad that he, we have him on the inside is that we become glory carriers. In other words, I don't leave God on a Sunday in a building. I don't leave God. Hallelujah. Amen. I carry him with me wherever I go. So things change when I step in a room. I don't allow rooms to change me. I change it. Why? Because I'm a glory carrier. Look at somebody say, I'm a glory carrier. Yeah, when I get on my job, baby, I'm a glory carrier because I didn't leave him in Relevant Kingdom Center in Jimmy Hill, amen, in a building, amen, that, that yes, he is there when we gather for sure, and his presence has assigned me to that place because it's in that place that, yes, he speaks to me and he gives me instructions and he, gi he gives me some significant things for my life. But, baby, I didn't leave God there. Come on. As a matter of fact, amen, when I go there, God will win with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Because where two or three of us are gathered, he is in the midst. And so when I come here, when I come on my job, Baby, I'm a glory carrier. Everybody say I'm a glory, a glory carrier. Yeah, when I step in a room, light and life follows me. So where there's darkness and negativity, it can dwell where I am. It can dwell around me because watch this. I got the glory. I got the presence of God in my life. Everybody say I got the glory. Yeah, I got the glory and I got the presence of God in my life. So watch this. My language is in God send your glory. The Bible tells us that, watch this, the glory of the Lord, amen, rests within us. And so I say, God, help me to continue to carry your glory. So I'm not waiting for God, amen, to rush in, and then all of a sudden the glory comes in a room, amen, and I feel, amen, some emotions and some tickling and all of these giggling and laughing. No, baby, I got the glory. Somebody say, I got the glory. So the glory of the Lord, amen, rests within us because of his presence, and that is why, y'all, I want you to remember that God shows up in the most unexpected places. It was from Galilee in a small town of Nazareth. Amen. Come on. To the place where he actually before that was in a manger. Hallelujah. And then after that, you would see that Jesus came up in an area that was considered a ghetto that Nathaniel himself would say nothing good could come from there. Here's the thing. God will show up in unexpected places. And I know y'all didn't expect this message because you thought I was just going to talk about a geographical location. No, but here's where the unexpected place is, where the presence of God now dwells. Not just Emmanuel with us, but God in us. He dwells in you. Look at your neighbor. So do you know who you got in you? Yeah, that's why you're valuable. That's why you're significant. 
That's why God will give you chance after chance after chance until you get it right. Come on now, somebody, because you're precious to him. Come on, you're his temple crafted by his very own hands. And so God is dwelling within you. And I'm grateful and I'm glad because this is why Christmas is worthy to be celebrated because he dwells within me. Everybody say, I'm a glory carrier. Come on, everybody say, I'm resilient. And somebody shout, I'm significant. Yeah, I know you didn't expect it because I don't look all that. I may be flawed. I may got some bumps and some bruises. Amen. But baby, God dwells in this temple. God is with us. He is in us. And he is here right now. Is there anybody grateful? Amen. That God shows up in unexpected places. Hallelujah. I just wanted to remind us of this important fact during this Christmas season as we kicked off this message because I want you to know that the presence of God is in you. And because he's in you, relevant or significant, you're resilient and you're a glory carrier. You change places. Places don't change you because of who dwells within God bless you. I want to pray for you. And I want everybody to lift their hands where you're at right now. Come on, lift your hands where you're at. Father, I pray for every person in relevant. Those that may have felt insignificant. Those that may say, well, there's nothing really special about me. Those that are online watching us right now that may have been feeling, Father, like there is nothing special about their life. Father God, I thank you that this message will remind them that God does not be, is not contained to man's preference. But Father God, that your presence come in unexpected places and that their, your presence is with them even right now. And as a result, I declare that we're going to have individuals in this church that in this Christmas season will bounce back. Individuals in this church that are so resilient because of your presence, Father God, that they would know, Father God, that you've got something special for them, that they've been chosen for such a time and for such a season as this, and that they would be glory carriers wherever they may be. God bless you, Relevant Kingdom Center, and Merry Christmas to all of you as you remember that we serve the God that does not just meet our expectations, but he exceeds them. Come on, give God a praise if you were blessed right there. Come on, you can do better than that, Relevant. Give God a praise if you were blessed right there. I'm going to welcome back up our service host right now at this moment, who's going to take us from here, amen, and continue on with the service as we get ready to go into a time of giving, amen, as we celebrate the season where we know that because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and so today, we are generous because God was generous to us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, let's welcome up our service host, amen, for today. 